Hi, I'm Michael. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I was painting one of the rooms at the house, so I'm gonna take you step by step how I go about painting a room. I started by removing the screws and nails from the wall. I then took off all the outlet covers and set them aside, being careful not to misplace any of the screws. After that, I continued and removed the shades and the hardware that was holding them up. I then took the heating vent cover off. After that, I dry scraped the holes and a couple of cracks that had formed on the walls from the settling of the house to knock down any paint flakes. And then I applied the first coat of mud or joint compound to all of the holes so that when I got the painting, I would have a nice holeless wall. I repaired the window frame cracks by applying a thin bead of caulk and then wiping it with a wet rag followed by a dry cloth to give me a nice smooth finish. For areas like the larger crack, you want to feather the joint compound so that it blends with the existing wall. I then repaired a crack around the heating vent using caulking. And the reason that I use caulking here is that it'll allow a little more elasticity and a little bit more give before the crack is able to reform in the future. After letting the joint compound set up overnight, I went back with a 150 grit sanding sponge and I sanded not only the spots where I had put the joint compound, feathering in the edges to the wall, but also the surrounding areas to knock down any bumps from previous paint jobs so that we would get a cleaner finish in our final product. After I finished this step, I dusted it off off camera with a dry rag, and then I cleaned up the dust that had fallen to the ground so that it wouldn't get stuck in my paintbrush as I was doing the trim later on. I then covered the floor using a plastic tarp, taping the edges so that it wouldn't slide as I was walking around on it. After covering the entire floor, I also wrapped the one remaining piece of furniture with the tarp as well so that when I painted the ceiling, nothing would splatter down onto it. The ceiling paint that I use has a slight pink tint to it, but as it dries, it will turn white so that you can tell what areas you've already painted and what still needs to be painted. For the ceiling, I always go with a flat paint as it helps to hide any imperfections and it's an area that's not going to be taking a lot of wear or abuse. I started by cutting in the ceiling using a two inch sash brush. Cutting in is when you go around the exterior of a ceiling or a wall and you just apply with a brush 
the amount of distance that you will not be able to hit with the roller. I didn't feel the need to be too careful because I am going to be going back to cutting the walls later. I had previously taped around all of the fixtures in the ceiling and before I did that, I did unscrew them slightly to just put a little bit of distance between them and the ceiling. That way when I cut in, I can get the paint right around them and then I set to rolling the ceiling, but we'll get into more detail on the rolling process when we get to the walls. I then set to cutting in the walls. For a bedroom, I tend to use an eggshell finish. If this were a bathroom or an area with a higher moisture level, I would be using a semi-gloss on the walls. To do this, I transferred a little bit of the wall paint into a secondary container so I didn't need to carry around the whole gallon. I then loaded my brush by dipping the brush into the container. And as I pull it out, I scrape the one side against the container so that the paint is only on one side of the brush. When I go to apply the paint to the wall, I start by putting the loaded side of the brush towards the wall, and then I reverse direction so that the dry side will pull the freshly spread paint up where it needs to be without making too much of a mess or giving me too much paint that I can't control. This is the best way to avoid needing to use painter's tape. Remember, if you do make a little mistake, it's okay. You can always go back afterwards and you can touch up the ceiling. I continued this all the way around the room until everything was cut in. I start with the tops and I work my way down along the ceiling and then down the edge of the wall I then lightly brushed over the areas where there had been fresh mud applied. I do this because the mud absorbs the first coat of paint quite a bit. And if I didn't brush on a little bit first, then it would require me to do a second coat of rolling because the first coat would come out looking pretty splotchy. Once I finished the first go around, I went back and I did uh, above the baseboard, continuing as I went to also hit around the outlets and give myself a nice amount of girth so that when I come back with the roller, I don't risk rolling over my outlets. I took this opportunity while I had a brush out to also put a coat of paint on the radiator cover as well. I then set to prepare rolling the walls. I started by putting a liner in a paint tray and pouring some of the wall paint in. I pour it about a third of the way up. This way it allows me enough room to roll my roller head into it without splashing it out onto the floor. I put a fresh roller on the roller handle and then I lightly roll it into the paint to saturate the roller. Using a paint pole extension, I then apply the paint to the wall. The way that I do this is I start it about halfway up on the wall, roll it in an upward direction, about three quarters of the way up, and then down to the floor, and then back up. I then dip more paint onto the roller as needed. You want to use long vertical strokes to have a consistent look and I only move the roller over about two inches at a time so that I'm going over the same area multiple times. When I got to the area that was tighter, I did need to take the roller handle off of the extension pole 
so that I could fit it in. I tried to mimic the same motion using my arm instead of the pole. I then set to painting the trim. On the trim, I always use a gloss paint as it is easier to clean and can take more of a beating when it comes to being kicked with shoes or bumped with furniture that's being moved. Using a two inch sash brush, I slowly make my way around the room using the same techniques that we used when cutting in the walls. I'm taking my time, but if I bump into it, as you can see I did here, it's not that big of a deal. A little bit of touch up and it'll be good to go. I went around with the ceiling paint, hit the areas on the ceiling that got bumped by the roller or the brush while cutting in, and then I repeated with the wall paint for the areas that I bumped with the trim paint. I scraped the extra paint off of the glass using a window scraper. And then replaced all of the wall outlet covers. And there you have it. That's how I go about painting a room. There are lots of different ways to do it. And if you have any tips or tricks that I didn't cover, I would love to hear about them in the comment. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click subscribe.